Hey guys, it's Adam Eldridge, TV producer and video editor here at On The Water. We've got a great webisode for you today, featuring a springtime fishery going on right now. Scup fishing, also known as porgies. Although scup aren't the biggest fish in the sea, they fight hard and make surprisingly delicious table fare. This time of year, you see lots of boats filled with families targeting these species specifically to take home for dinner. So sit back, check out our fishing adventure, and feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel as we have a lot of great fishing content heading your way. Thanks. We left the dock at Falmouth Harbor, hoping to return with coolers full of some of the first fresh seafood of the new season. While our specific target was squid, when we reached the grounds, we learned in short order that we'd missed the bite by a few days. But the fish finder was full, and after switching our squid jigs for high-low rigs, we decided to make the most of whatever was out there. So Jim, all over Cape Cod, early, end of April, early May, there's all sorts of opportunities out here, but you kind of have to create those opportunities. It's not like midsummer where you can go out there and say, okay, I'm gonna go do the striped bass here. You know, school bluefin have moved in south of the vineyard. You know, you got the haddock bite that's going on. Kind of, well, halfway through April, right? That's gonna start up. Here we are, early May, it's still cold out. It's supposed to be 60 degrees, but on Cape Cod, you get to 50 degrees in early May and you feel like you're actually doing something. Yeah, it's, it's one of those days where it's probably 70 in t-shirt weather in Boston and we're all bundled up here, nothing but gray skies and, cloud, and fog. And a big part of that, what people don't understand is the ocean here in Vineyard Sound will get down to 35 degrees during the winter. And so it takes a long time for the ocean to, to heat up. The flip side of that coin is it heats up all summer. By the time the end of August rolls around, we're sitting in 73, 74 degree water here in Vineyard Sound. And all fall, it takes a long time for it to cool down. So we get beautiful falls down here on the Cape, which creates a different opportunity for us as far as fishing and the weather goes. And one thing that I think is one of the most underrated fish that I know if it's done right, and I'm not the guy to do it right, is the big, uh, big porgies. So I've never had them prepared this way. I'm hoping we can get one to bring home. They say grilled whole scup is one of the best eating fish you can get. I mean, people, uh, scup aren't one of those fish that are really coveted, you know, among guys for, yeah. for eating. That being said, people pay big money and come to Cape Cod in droves, in buses, and they'll come from New York and New Jersey and, and from Connecticut. They'll get on the bus, they'll do these three-day trips where they come up here, they get out on the party boats, they do a turn and burn, and they come back with two or three coolers just chock full of them, and, and they love them. Yeah, they, they, uh, and there's no better time to fish for scup than right now. The past few years, the season's opened on May 1st, and when they first show up, that's when you have your shot at getting the real big ones. You know, they'll get picked over and those big ones will move deep uh, a little bit later in the season, but right now, we're just a few days into the season, and that's when you hear about some real big, you know, three, even four pound porgies being caught. Oh yeah, come on now, stay buttoned. I think that's a nice sea robin. Do you feel him gliding down there with his wings? They do that, they'll do that. Yep, beautiful. They, they go, you're gonna have to give that back. Oh, I had double robins, sea robin two for. When we were, when we first moved in there, you could see how the, the, the uh, scup are gonna stack up a lot different than what the, the few marks that we're getting in here. So I'm gonna drop down a high-low rig to see, uh, see if I can find some of those big scup I've been hearing about out here. For bait, oh, that didn't take long to get bit. For bait, I'm just using pieces of Berkeley Gulp that are left over from my flounder season last year. They're ones that are a little bit too torn up to use for flounder bait, and I just hang on to them until, you know, the sea bass and uh, porgies don't really care about what the gulp looks like if it's torn up, so. Great idea. That now that's that is a, a nice fish, Jimbo. Huh? Little dinner plate. Now that is why you go porgy fishing early in the season. This is 
These are the fish that are around in the early weeks of May. As, as soon as they first show up, that's when you can get those real big porgies. I mean, that is just, that's fantastic. And they, they are such great fighters for their size. Chris, we're taking him home, right? Yeah, I think so, Jim. So one of the sea robins. It's another one of these little northern sea robins. Oh, she want? dig it, she dig it. Oh, oh yeah. They're definitely in a big flock of robins. I think we gotta make a little bit of a move. Sea robins are one of the Northeast's most underrated food fish. While they are undeniably a pain for fishermen targeting fluke or other more desirable species, they have firm white fillets that make excellent fish tacos. Though we found piles of both northern and striped sea robins, with scup already in the cooler, we opted to let the robins fly free this time around. We have great marks on the bottom, Jim. Look at the stack right here, Jim. Whoa. Oh, it's nice that I can literally go ahead and place a mark on this. I'm just gonna add a waypoint to that. I'm gonna drop this in. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on that unit. Come on up here, we're just gonna power it up. We are good. They'd be stacked 10 feet off the bottom. Oh, is this the right kind? Yeah, I think this is a porgy here. It is, big one. Oh, double, double. <laughs> oh, I, oh, one's gone, but big one hung on. Nope, oh, king of the sea robins. Now that. <laughs> That's one of, another one? Look yeah. at that. Look at the color in that. Really, really cool fish and, and great fighters. I've heard so many people say that if porgies grew to 10 pounds, 15 pounds, they wouldn't fish for anything else. Just got clobbered. Not quite Jimmy territory, but get in here, fella. So these only have to be nine inches. This is probably just a little bit over that, I would say. Yeah, that probably just makes keeper size. They're so plentiful out there that this is one that's probably gonna get a chance to go back. So this is a typical Cape Cod early May trip. If you looked at the weather, it's supposed to be absolutely gorgeous. One to two foot seas. Not that it's that much bigger than that, but we're definitely getting some swells upwards, two to three foot seas, and in a 20 foot, 22 foot, you know, Skeeter, which is somewhat of a bay boat that way, you're gonna feel these rolls a little bit more. But, um, okay, to get out here and bend a rod, light, light tackle. I'm fishing one of the Tsunami, uh, what do they call this, the Slim Wave? So yeah, the rod's the Slim Wave. That's uh, one of their, their light action bottom fishing rods. It has a lot of guts, but it's really kind of soft, so it allows you to fish lighter uh I love the action weights. on it that way. I think my watch weighs as much as this thing. Yeah. You know, which is great. Yeah, and the reel is a Maxo hybrid. I've actually got, um, this is a new spinning reel offering from Shimano that it's a spinning reel specifically designed for bottom fishing. And it's, it's become really more popular over the past couple years, whether guys are, are fishing lighter gear for sea bass or jigs for tog, or they're bucktailing for fluke. Spinning reels really have a sort of growing application among bottom, bottom fishermen. A little slop. Gotta be careful of that back dorsal. I'll tell you what, they will prick you. Jake, open the thing. This guy's going with us. Are you right on the bottom, Jimmy? You just yeah, above it. I'm right on the bottom.
Dude, that's a slob. That's a big one. <laughs> hey, Chris, you were saying to me earlier, like, people overlook porgies. They overlook the scup, but you're saying if this fish was swimming in fresh water, people would lose their minds to catch it. I mean, just because it's in salt water and you have other options. Uh, that are a lot larger than that. When you start thinking about the striped bass and you start thinking about the offshore side of things, but if you caught that in fresh water, you'd be, you'd be pumped. 